Hi, my name is Missy. I am here to do the bullshit and the blessings. Give me one second. Um, I just want to make sure. I, I'm actually going to change my camera angles today. We're going to try and just do this from this angle here. I just had to make sure I had everything on my computer set up. Let me get my Pandora turned on and my earbuds in. All right. Um, give me one second. I apologize. I just got to get everything set up because, like I said, this is a new um, a, a new a camera angle for me, and so, and I want to make sure that I have my earbuds set correctly. All right. So what we're going to do is the bullshit and the blessings, and you know, let me move some of these things out of the way because, like I said, I um. um I'm not going to be switching cameras. I just filmed another Bullshit and the Blessings video where I was having to switch cameras so that I could go between the cards and the charms. And uh, it's a pain in my ass. So this is what we're actually going to do. Uh, we're going to start by shuffling some cards. And while I do that, I will... Um, go ahead with my disclaimer, and this is going to be the only time that I say my disclaimer in this video, just because I, I get so, it's just so tiring. I need to actually finally get it written out so that I can post it on my channel. Um, anyway, so these readings are meant to be timeless and general in nature. If the details fit, it is meant for you. If they do not, it is not meant for you. <laughs> obviously <laughs> please do not try to make the details fit as that will do more harm than good i am not a doctor a lawyer or accountant if you need advice in those areas please consult a professional please do not do something simply because i suggest it as advice in this video you are an adult who has responsibility for your own life please use that responsibility to your advantage if you hear me call out a song and artist during the reading please remember not every word of that song or the theme even of that song is going to apply to the reading it could simply be the artist that um that is important the name of the song one word one sentence or the chorus of that song uh you'll just have to use your, your intuition to know how that applies to you and hey sometimes i'll even interpret it myself if i am hearing the lyrics or if i am very familiar with the song all right so with that said let's get into the reading what we're going to do here is we've got some uh different animal cards um so we're going to choose some of these as the focus cards for each group um then we're going to shuffle some of these over here so these cards what we're going to do when i when we shuffle and deal these out um these are going to be the actual blessings portion of the bullshit and the blessings so we're going to deal them face down and we won't actually read or see what they are until we get to the end of the reading uh and we'll use tarot uh you know whichever deck i've got three of them here that i'm going to choose from so um more than likely we'll probably have three groups to choose from just because i feel like three is the number today uh, but we'll see how the cards fall i could be wrong <laughs> as i always say i come i come into these readings with a plan i'll have created a brand new spread and next thing you know the cards start coming out and all of that is just wasted time so all right let's get some focus cards I also have a bird who hates me. So if you hear him scrunching or doing anything obnoxious in the background, I apologize. All right, so we are going to start off with the moth. That's going to be group number one. I guess I should pay attention to the camera so I can see. Now we have the butterfly.
And yeah, immediately, I already feel like we need to have four groups. So we're having four groups, even though I've only got three sets of cards and one, one group may, or two groups may have the same deck. Uh, so this is the goat. Let me make sure. Yeah, that's the goat. <laughs> I always get confused by their horns. I know one curls in and I think that's the ram. And then finally, uh, this is the dove is going to be group number four. All right, so let me get some blessings. Uh, we have the song, oh, hold on a second. Uh, what you know about love, pop smoke playing in the background. I guess I should be careful how I shuffle, huh? Excuse me. I don't know why I'm being so particular about these piles. They're just going to get messed up. So I should just kind of go with it here and let them get messed up for a minute until the end. Then I can go OCD on it. All right. All Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay. So we'll leave that here for the thumbnail. Go ahead and choose. All right, hello, group one. So here we have the moth group. And so what we're going to do, um, we're going to leave these three cards here. These are going to be your blessing. But first, I want to look and see what is the bullshit. <clears throat> and so I guess you would get the, the catch. I felt a need to have some animals. They see. She felt like an earthy animal kind of day. So what's the bullshit going on? Your bullshit and blessings this week. I got to be honest. I, I just, I've been filming uh, a bunch of videos today. And for some reason, this particular video, uh, I'm feeling kind of reserved, but reserved isn't really the the right word it's a very calm feeling quiet normally i would feel as if i have to um fill the void with talking not today for some reason Okay, so we have the Five of Pentacles coming out immediately, which tells me uh, the bullshit starting off your reading is that you're kind of feeling left out, rejected. Um, you know, you're kind of like the the out on the outside looking in, being left out in the cold. Um, something's happening where, you know, this cat is obviously looking inside the window at a cat who's, you know, very comfortable and warm, but this cat's in the cold. So you're feeling left out or there's some sort of lack. You feel like you're lacking something. All right. What is it? What is it? What is it? So now we have the sea kitten, which is basically the page of cups. We have the uh, king of pentacles. So we have both a uh, water sign and earth sign on the board so far. And then we have the, uh, the consequences card, the justice card. Okay. Oh, interesting. So, you know, obviously it's, um, you know, there's a water sign and, a, and an earth sign involved. Uh, one is feeling left out um, because the other is very comfortable. And I have to say, I think it's the earth sign that's very comfortable because of the of the two cats that are depicted in the two court cards here. This one, he's like, his, his paws are getting wet. And we know that cats don't really like to get to get wet it's you know a very rare cat that enjoys getting wet so this would be the more comfortable kitty cat right so it's obviously going to be the earth sign i mean it doesn't have to be take it however it resonates for your situation but it's obviously going to be the earth sign based on just this this um imagery right um and the other is feeling the consequences of something the consequences of what why does why does this water sign feel left out let's see what's going on with these cards uh to see what it is what do you feel left out of 
Sorry. So that was all that was all me. My I feel clumsy right now, like my hands for some reason. So I'm just gonna give it a good shuffle and start over. Oh, okay. Stuff's falling over. Um, it's interesting that stuff has fallen over, and I was just saying I was feeling clumsy. Um, are you feeling either clumsy or klutzy or ditzy? Did you fumble something? Is that is that what the consequences are? And that's why you feel left out. Like, what did you fumble? You do have the two of swords. Okay. Um, and it is coming out underneath the sea kitten. So that tells me there was a decision that was that that needed to be made between two things or two people. Um, and it's looking so far like maybe you're not happy with the decision that you made, the choice that you made. Um, you know, so far, we, the only numbers that we have on the board are two and five. Um, so uh, 11, which breaks down to a two, and then that one is a, a two. Um, oh, that was just me being klutzy right there. Um, and actually, it, I think it flips some of the cards over. So let me give it another shuffle to see if those cards end up getting incorporated into the reading or not. And I don't normally read reversals unless they fall that way from the deck. So let's see what happens. Uh, we have the song. Um, California Love by Tupac Payne in the background. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> Nothing else wants to come out. I thought something just came out, but I guess not. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now we have the Nine of Cups. Interesting. And look at the Nine of Cups is coming out right underneath that King of Pentacles. So the Earth sign is absolutely happy. Look at that. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh, my God. What was the choice? I'm so curious. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry to laugh. I, I really, oh my God, I'm sorry. Especially if you're like over here really hurt and in your feelings, I'm sorry to laugh, but I just need to know what was the choice. Okay, now we have the eight of wands coming out. <laughs> oh my God, I think, I can't help it. I think this was a choice between two people. I got to be honest, I think this was a choice between two people. Look at these two cards, right? It's so funny. So, and then we have Bad Liar by um, Imagine Dragons playing in the background. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So this is like consequences, right? Like, so I think I got to be honest, I think this was a choice between two people, right? And um, now there's like, you're, you're like, you're, you're tied, like you're caught, you're tied up, you're caught up in this, whatever, like you're tied up or bound up in the consequences of this choice, right? But this is what you really want to do, like get the hell out of there as fast as you can. I'm sorry, it's just the imagery, like this is the reason that I love tarot because like, oh my God, it's just so funny, right? This cat's like, get me the fuck out of here. Oh my God, okay. <laughs> Look. 
And you've got um, what is this? The two of pentacles. Oh, sorry. I guess I should. I should. Oh, this is the camera. <laughs> forgive me i have a couple of cameras and like i said this is a different camera angle um so yeah this is the two of pentacles on the bottom of the deck so um again another two com coming out in the in reading um but like the two of pentacles is a card that talks about like juggling so you were either juggling two people or two things or you had a choice between two things um and you you like um so what's interesting about this is like, look at all these cats that are inside of all the different boxes, dishes, hanging from a basket from the ceiling. It kind of looks like chaos, right? But for those cats, that is the epitome of comfort and security, even though I'm so sorry if I walked into somebody's house and they had cats all over their house like this, I would be afraid to like walk inside only because I have allergies and don't get me wrong. I love animals so much. Like you guys, I want to have my own like farm of animals, but like to have cats like this everywhere, that would be, I would sneeze from the moment I walked in the door right um so i don't know it's giving me a feeling of chaos especially with this juggling card here like i feel like there's a sense of like juggling so this can be actually like the, I, you know not everybody's going to be saying oh it was a choice between two people i, I think for some people it was actually a, a choice that had to do with work um because this is the ten of um pentacles and so the ten of pentacles typically talks about like the ultimate security long-term security building a legacy right and so um, I, I feel like this is saying like there was a choice between two things and the one that you chose ended up being chaos and you kind of wish you could get the fuck out right because here's the thing like if you chose this one and you if you if it was me and I chose this one and like suddenly I'm walking into this house and I'm sneezing every day that I go to work because I'm allergic to something there that's fucking chaos and trust me I would I would I would be like I can't wait to get home every day I can't wait to leave this job right so if that's what it was if it was somebody who had a choice between two jobs and they chose wrong and now they're like I I you know I'm feeling really left out because I'm looking at this other job and and I should have chose that I that should have been the one that I I picked because it would have been a much better fit but if it's people it's kind of along the same um along the same concept where it's saying like you know um you you made this choice and like now you're kind of sticking to the to the you you really or you're seeing the consequences and you 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 really want to get the hell out um I'm going to finish out the nine card spread just because um I I'm not going to say uh well hold on let me let me get some more cards just before I say any more all right so this is the four of swords um and the four of swords if you, you can even see with this cat this cat is like exhausted on this log probably because it was you know lost at sea um in the chaos of you know the consequences over here right of the choice so this cat's been out at sea which is very chaotic for a cat um while apparently <laughs> Um, the earth sign has been sitting pretty. <laughs> Look at the difference. Oh my God. Oh, I love tarot. Um, and so let's see over here because you know uh if you don't already know how a nine card spread works this side would be the past or as we're reading it today this is one person this is the other person um actually this here is this cat this here is the cat on the inside of the house is how i should say it and this here is the outcome between them all right or the the energy the outcome of the energy that's here all right one last card or one last uh shuffle i should say just to get information it could be several cards you just never know we have the song knocking on heaven's door uh, by guns and roses in the background let's see i'll come or what's coming next i should say um you know that could be advice because this is the what's next column i don't know if i explained that yet or the immediate future 
<laughs> Come on. All right. So we have the stars and the wheel of fortune. Um, interesting. And I got to be honest with you. The wheel of fortune's in the reverse. Even though the stars is the the most positive card in the deck, um, the wheel of fortune's in the reverse. And so um, the wheel of fortune typically talks about fate being in your hands or you know it's typically a decision a choice or whatever um you know that you make that turns the wheel and as you can see even though it's in the reverse it's this cat playing with this um playing with the wheel that's causing it to spin so in other words what this is saying is you already dealt your hand like you you were the one that caused your own fate right um you have, I, th I feel like what it's saying is you have to make the best of your own fate, basically. You know, you have this, and it, um, uh, it could be, I know I was saying water and earth here, but it could be a fire sign that you are wishing for or hoping for, because I say that because look at this cat, looks as if they're, like, this is their biggest dream, their biggest wish, their biggest desire. Like, you know, um, I couldn't ask for anything more than Leo, basically, is what this is saying, right? And so... Um, like, I don't know how, I, I, you know, your person could be Leo. I don't know what this is. Maybe Leo has to do with like recognition for you in some way, if this is a job situation. Um, but I feel like what this is saying is you have to make the best of your situation because it was your hand that turned the wheel of fate. Um, Another thing that I do have to say, um, you know, because of the way that this is set up, it's like, it's almost like saying, um, be careful what you wish for, you just might get it. Because I do have a feeling like this is also saying, you asked for this, you because you were the one that made this choice, you made this decision, You're, you, this is now the consequences of the decision you made, like you asked for this, um, this was your doing, right, like this was the wish that, that you put out into the world that was granted, right, um, you still have control of that wheel. Even if you're not happy with your wish, the way it is, has manifested, you still have control of that wheel. If you're not happy with your fate, you have to do something to change it, which typically means you have to heal something within yourself. Um, you know, because what, what was it like that made you make the decision that you made, right? Like, I don't know, maybe it was something mundane, mundane. maybe one job offered more money than the other. Um, and so that's that's in and of itself a lesson, right? Like, you know, really pay attention to the details if you get an opportunity for another job that you might like better. Because at this point, you know, obviously you can't quit one job unless you have the money to, to support yourself, right? Um, or another job to support yourself. So let's look at the blessings portion of your reading. And it's funny that my bird is suddenly speaking up at this moment. Um, okay, so we have Lapis Lazuli. So your calcite, which is the universal mind. And indigo, improve your vision. So interesting. Uh, all of this, all three of these cards are third eye and crown chakra. Literally, it's all about manifesting your dreams, which is this right here, actually these last two cards. So even though I feel like what it's saying, you know, this is the hand you dealt yourself, you have to deal with it. I also feel like it's saying you still control this wheel. If you can dream it, you can have it obviously, because that's what this is saying that you dreamt it before and you have it now. 
right? Uh, at, you know, I, I want to refer back to the cat that looks like it's saying, you know, Leo is the personification of everything I could possibly want, <laughs> right? So if you dreamt it up before, you can do it again. Um, the blessing is, is that you are always the master of your own destiny. You always have control of this wheel. That's what these cards are saying. It's so interesting the way it came out. Um, but, you know, hey, another reason that I love tarot. So let's go ahead and get some charms. Let me get these put away. I don't know if you're going to see editing in this portion or not. Let's leave that there so that we know when we're doing the charms that this is still the moth. Interesting. I feel like I need to leave this here if any of the charms happen to fall outside of the um, outside of the um, you know the thing. I just feel like it's a special confirmation. I don't know if it'll happen or not, but we'll see. All right. So the way we read these: uh, Earth Star Chakra, Soul Star Chakra. This is also the Moon and Feminine or Divine Feminine. This would be uh, the Sun and Divine Masculine. Root Chakra. Sacral chakra, solar plexus, uh, heart, throat, third eye, and crown. All right. We have the song uh, Face to the Floor by Chevelle playing in the background. A really good note. Okay. All right. So starting here with the Earth Star. Oh, so we have the uh the rune of birth in the reverse. So um there's some idea that you have not been grounding. You haven't been nurturing it enough to ground it in reality basically is what this this rune is saying in the reverse like you haven't um in order to ground a, an idea a um you know any to, in order to ground anything into reality when it, when i say nurture it you can't just say well this is i want to do xyz you have to have to actually put the steps into place right um you know, if you want to ha have an actual baby, you have to have sex. Um, you have to be fertile. You have to you have to be healthy enough. Um, if you're if you're trying to have a baby and but you're not taking care of your health, um, you know you're not um, you're not nurturing the process uh, to the best of your ability. Um, and so I feel like because this is in the reverse, it's like there, something is not, there, it's not being born. It's not being created because you're not nurturing it. Uh, we, if we come here to the root chakra as well, I just kind of want to, um, you know, play off of that. We have the ring, we have the, I love you, uh, heart, we have the sun in the reverse, you know, and then we have the love that came in the reverse and a piece and a slice of pizza. All right. With, with the hundred dollar bill. So, um, here's the thing. I feel like I got to be honest with you because of this ring here, this is a relationship right? Anytime this ring falls down on, onto the root chakra, that's a relationship. It's like a marriage, right? Whatever this marriage is, I feel like there's no love, no more happiness because this, all of these, all three of these fell upside down, like one, two, three, and they all, this is the, the, the sun always denotes joy. And both of these literally say, I love you on them, right? But they're upside down, meaning there's no more love, there's no more happiness, but I feel like there is abundance. There is abundance and security to be had with this $100 bill falling in the upright. So maybe money is keeping you there. 
you're like, oh, well, I need to eat, right, with the pizza. But pizzas can also, um, pizzas can also denote like fun, pizza parties, right, a celebration. Um, maybe you're partying. Maybe, I don't know, maybe there is something fun about this relationship, even though there's no joy or love. For whatever reason, take it however it resonates. Um that's just kind of what I'm seeing with all of these charms here. Uh, we do have the Aquarius charm that's coming out over the, the sun or the soul star chakra. Um, and so Aquarius is, you know, it's all about like community, you fellow man, like literally Aquarius just wants everyone to be peaceful and to be happy. Like, like they just don't want um, like Aquarius kind of gets a bad rap for being cold, right? Because, you know, they, they do they, it's like the whole idea of universal love. Like <laughs> we want everyone to love everyone and get along and be peaceful. Um, but you don't want to be bothered too much, right? Like you don't want to have to be the one to put the steps. You don't want to have to do the work for them. Let them do the work themselves, basically, but you do want peace and happiness. Like that's the energy of Aquarius, right? Um, and because it's coming out on, you know, what would be the soul star chakra as well as the masculine energy or the sun, um, which brings clarity to the situation, right? Like, I don't know. I just have a feeling like this is sort of the energy, like you could be dealing with an Aquarius or you could be an Aquarius yourself, but I feel like this is kind of in the higher mind because this is the soul star chakra, which is the chakra that's just above your, your head. Um, it's your connection to source. And so, um, it's like a higher, a higher perspective, which is kind of what Aquarian energy is anyway, when it, especially, you know, with that ideal of universal love, universal peace, universal happiness, right? So if this is the ideal that you have, and you're in this relationship here where it's abundant, but there's no more love there, um, maybe you need to have a conversation. And I say that because we have the butterfly that's coming out on over the um, earth star and uh, throat chakras. Butterflies represent transformation and change like death actually is what butterflies represent. Hello, they're all over my arm. Um, and so, you know, hello. Um, you know, they represent transformation, the Phoenix rising from the ashes. Right. And so, if you're in this situation, but you want to be happy and you want everybody else to be happy, you need to have the hard conversation. You need to build a bridge, right? Because you have the bridge, like right now, the bridge is in the reverse. Um, there could be somebody that you need to speak to, um, it, you know, it really speak to from your heart um, because there's this, um, the bellows here, like when you have, whenever you have the bellows, the bellows, it's what um, breathes life back into the fire, right? And so you're breathing life back into the situation, whether it's this situation or, you know, whatever the case may be, but I do feel like it's this situation. You want to breathe life back into it. You want everybody to be happy. You want everybody to be peaceful. You want everyone to have joy because of the dolphin coming um, over here between the, uh, um, crown and throat chakra you have the moon uh as well in the same area right so this is all about emotions dolphin the the moon is emotion dolphins are joy um oh interesting oh my god uh, we have the song, I Hate You by Oliver Tree playing in the background. And I'm sorry, as I was saying all of this emotions, joy, emotions, I heard, I hate you. You're the worst best friend I've ever had. So interesting. Okay. Um, oh, interesting. Okay. And I feel like this is absolutely a family issue where you don't feel like family anymore because all of the charms are falling in the reverse, except for the one that speaks to, or the ones that speak to communication, abundance, um, breathing life back into the situation, the Aquarius 
charm fell in the upright, the pizza charm fell in the upright, but the the cancer, the sun, the love charms, the the bridge, um, the the moon, all of that was in the reverse. Meaning, you know, uh, right now, like. Um, you're hiding your emotions. You're not reaching out uh, to build a bridge or even try to compromise. Uh, there's no love left in the situation. There's no joy left in the situation. You used to feel like family, but not anymore. It could be that you're dealing with a cancer and that um, maybe you're not paying attention to what the cancer wants. Or if you're the sun sign cancer, you're not paying attention to your own wants and needs because this came out in the reverse in the solar plexus chakra area. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and leave. Well, actually, no, I'm not going to leave this here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, I'm going to use some of these astro dice and we're just going to this is going to be the final portion of the charms. We're just going to drop them in wherever they land. We're going to read them in conjunction with whatever they they uh, join to or land on. You'll see. Just trust me. Okay, we have the song Photograph by Nickelback playing in the background. All right, so Jupiter came out with the ring. Remember where I said that, um, you know, oh, and interesting, the I love you charm is now, it's still in the upright and it fell out over the money. So Jupiter with the ring, uh, that's just a confirmation that this relationship is very abundant right? Um, it's a very abundant relationship for you. Um, and I do think that you can uh, breathe life back into the situation. And I'll get to that in just a second as to the exact reasons why. Um, but, you know, su suffice to say, this is just one of them having this I love you charm staying in the upright on top of the money. That's like an abundance of love coming in. Um, we do have the Virgo, uh, the sign of Virgo on the um, the root chakra next to the pizza. So um, what this is talking about is saying like, if there's still fun, if there's still fun that you have, it, like it's still, you still, um, even if there's no love or you feel like there's no love and you're not happy, but there's still enjoyment to be had, pay attention to those details, focus on those details. That's going to be important. Another interesting thing, the butterfly moved to the root chakra. So that is speaking of, you know, changes that are going to be, that bring insecurity, like whatever those changes are, it brings insecurity to this situation. Um, and then we also have the Aquarius charm pitched over into the root uh, chakra area. So, you know, again, there's security there. Uh, also, the bellows, um, the bellows moved from the uh, heart and throat chakra area to the throat and uh, um, crown chakra area, and it fell with the sign of Leo and the 11th house. Okay. So, um, what that tells me is, you know, basically Leo is all about like recognition, right? Um, bringing, bringing the spotlight to someone or something, because that's just the, I mean, you could be dealing with a Leo, uh, or a Virgo, a Aquarius, uh, or a Cancer or a Taurus and Scorpio as per the reading. Um, but I feel like what this is saying is, you know how to breathe life into the situation. It, it's going to require some sort of communication because this is the throat chakra that calls light or calls attention to the situation. Maybe that's a conversation. It's going to be with your community. Maybe this is something that you have to say or do publicly. I don't know. Only you will know. We have the first house coming out over this heart chakra, and it's still right next to the bird, right? So again, this, and, and then you have Uranus also following right next to the bird. So Uranus is like sudden clarity, um, sudden clarity that comes through communication. More than likely, it's going to be you watching this that, that is the one who breathes life back into the situation. You already know exactly how to do it. Possibly it's something that you need to do publicly or within your community in some way to, to call attention, to recognize someone, um, you know, 
I don't know, um, it's like a public display, display of affection or something um, that brings in um, like changes, like security, long-term security and, and reignites the love and the fun and the abundance of this particular relationship. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave that here. I hope that resonates. If it does not, please stay tuned. There may be another reading for you here on the channel that does. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, tell your friends whatever you can to help get my channel out there as I am new here. And I thank you for watching. Hello, group two. So we have the butterfly group. And what we're going to do is we are going to pull some tarot cards to see what the bullshit portion of your reading is. And then at the very end, we'll look at these to see what are the blessings coming in for you. Okay. We have the song Waiting for a Girl Like You by Foreigner playing in the back. We're going to go ahead and use the dog tarot today. Give me one second. I, I need to go ahead and shuffle this deck because I know I'm going to have to use one deck twice. So I just want to take this one second to get this deck cleared because I, I forgot to do it. I apologize. I'm so sorry. I don't know if I'm going to edit this out, but I don't think I will. I just want to give it a couple of shuffles because otherwise I'll forget. It's, it's a problem that I have. And probably part of my OCD. Because I know if I don't do it right now, I absolutely will forget. Okay. All right. So we're going to use the dog tarot to see what is the bullshit portion of your bullshit. It's this sweet. And if you hear my bird screeching in the background, I apologize. He hates me. I annoy him when we sit here and talk like this. Although I think right now, actually, Actually, hold on. He's asking to be let out of his cage. Give me one second. I apologize for the delays. Um, you know, it's so interesting because we started out with the song Waiting for a Girl Like You. Uh, I wonder if there has been a lot of delays in something for you, but give me one second. Let me let him out. All right, birdie, birdie. Please don't bite me. You want to come visit? Mm -hmm. Come on. Okay, I think he's happier now. Well, I'm not completely happy. I have to be honest with you. I don't know why, but I think he actually wants. Oh, I think he actually wants to come and see me. Dude, I don't know why he always tries to bite me and I don't trust him. So I, dude, that that literally, that's his his begging squeak. I don't know if you guys can hear that. That's like his begging squeak. He so badly wants me to come and get him and I'm not dumb enough to do it. Mm -mm, ain't going to happen. That bird has bit me too many times. I'm not dumb enough. All right, let's see what the bullshit portion of your reading is and hopefully he'll stop. He always does this. He tries to fake me out. That sweetie, sweetie. Um, you know, I am so cute. BS. When I go in there and try to give him a treat, and he tries to take a chunk out of me. I'm not going to be dumb enough again. All right. Oh, well, now he's barking at me, <laughs> which is so funny because I'm using the dog to row, but anyway. Okay. I don't, my dogs aren't even out here. He usually only barks at the dogs. <laughs> Uh, that's funny. Okay, what's the bullshit going on for you this week? Yeah. 
Uh, is there any bullshit going on for you this week? Did we already cover it with the the delays and the main birdie? <laughs> Have you been like, I don't know, trying to accomplish something and I don't, it just seems like at every turn somebody or something um, pushes you back? Because that's how I feel with that bird. That's the reason that I'm saying that. Like, that's my dynamic with the bird right now. Like, he he keeps psyching me out. Like, you know, faking me out. He's all sweetsy, sweetsy, like he was doing just now. So maybe there's something where you keep thinking that you're making progress. And then there's boom, another delay, another delay. Or it could be that you're in a relationship or you've been in multiple relationships where you think it's going to be good. It all starts out really good. And then next thing you know, boom, the person switches right now, if that's the case and um, you're, you're like, man, yeah, I just, it seems like every single time I think I'm, you know, I've got a good one. They, they flip the, the script on me, right? That means you're choosing the wrong person. Um, so if uh, an interesting, so we have the song, um, remember everything by five feet, five finger death punch playing in the background. So I kind of feel like maybe that is playing in. Maybe you've had a string of really bad relationships in the past. And you're like, I keep looking for my person. And every time I'm get, I get bit and not in the good way. <laughs> um, Interesting. All right. One more shuffle and then we'll try to get the bullshit portion. Boy. All right. Interesting. It's actually talking about an end to all of that. Oh, I, I put it up way too high where you couldn't see it. Sorry. I keep forgetting that I'm not using the other camera angle that I was using before. Um, let me get this situated. So, um, I think maybe we already covered the bullshit portion of your reading and it's getting into the blessings when I wanted to use those for the blessings, but let's find out. This is talking about, we're starting off um, pretty good here. It, you know, this is an accomplishment. You can see this dog is very happy. This is the world card. So you've accomplished something or you've achieved something, um, but it's also because you've achieved something it's the end. Now you have to move on to something else, right? Um, and I think what you've achieved is you've overcome this pain, um, all of this, like what's going on in the background with the song. I remember everything, like you're finally getting over all of that stuff. Um, that one feels like it wants to come out. All right. Okay, and so now we've got this decision to make. What is the decision? Let's find out. So we have the Eight of Cups, the Sky Guardian. I'm going to keep going until we have nine cards here, and then I'm going to tell you what I think. Come on. All right. I feel like I actually feel like it kind of goes like this, to be honest. Okay. So let's see what we have here. Two of swords with the two of pentacles right on top of each other. So there's a choice that you need to make. Uh, 
Okay. Definitely a choice. And, and you have a lot of options with this choice too, by the way. Oh, interesting. Oh, very interesting. Okay. And we have uh, the song um, Like That by B. Miller playing in the background. Let me see if I can get these back into the frame because I was too busy looking at them for myself. All right. So I forgot about the butterfly at the very beginning of our reading. And we're going to actually look at that first, now that I got these all done. So butterflies obviously are all about transformation, death, and ending of one thing so that the phoenix can rise from the ashes and birth something new. Remember, this is the end of one thing so that you can start something new. So obviously, you've had some huge transformation. You've undergone a big change in yourself, which means that you've overcome all of that energy that we were already speaking of. This, you know, I, I keep choosing the wrong partner. Every time I think I've got the right one, it's the wrong one, blah, 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 BS, right? I'm walking away from all of that because that's what this energy here is on the left-hand side. Uh, specifically, the Eight of Cups is the card of walking away. By walking away, you spin the wheel in your favor. As you can see, it's the dog on the inside of that wheel, turning it kind of like a hamster wheel. So you were the one who spun the wheel in your favor. And we're going to see what you win, what's your prize when we get to these cards here. Um, and by doing that, you, you ended up giving yourself like a lot of options. Literally, you bridged, like you, 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 it was literally you can see this is um the ten of swords is all about like misery and death and betrayal and like you know the person is dead they've been stabbed in the back so many times that they can't get up their blood they've drained they're drained of blood um but you've overcome that hurdle obviously right you've just you jumped right over that instead of um sitting in that pain and by doing that you now have a lot of like dreams and options right there, as you can see on those lily pads, right? There's a bunch of different options there. Um, looks like a lotus flower. We've got a dragonfly. We've got some bones. We've got a fairy. We've got a frog. Uh, I think that's like a crystal ball or something in the center. So, you know, you've got a bunch of different things to choose from. Now, um, we end with this energy here, more energy of a choice. There is some juggling attached. I do have to say that this, this dog looks a little bit frightened in this tree. Um, you know, so maybe there's something about, you're going to have to like think on your toes. You're going to have to be really quick witted and agile maybe, um, because of both of these both of these cards are depicting that one looks like he doesn't know how to get down out of this tree. Maybe there's something that you need to do. Um, uh, to get out of a particular situation that you are currently in that's going to be a little bit tricky, that's going to require some work with the eight of pentacles here in your outcome. Um, but then you have the lovers and the ace of cups, very, very positive outcome. Like it is going to be a lot of hard work, but, but um, like, or you're going to have to put the work into whatever this choice is, right. Um, or whatever the final choice is that, but I like, you have multiple choices is what I'm saying. Um, especially if this is, and by the way, we have Ario Speedwagon, um, take it on the run playing in the background. And it's exactly 2 34 PM as I, as I look at that. So that's an angel number Then it's ascending or climbing. Right. Um, so that's good. That means, you know, um, you, you know, that's positive energy. So I think based on all of this, you're waiting, you're looking for your, the right person. Um, you have a lot of options coming in, whichever one you choose, 
um, I think ultimately you are going to choose, you know, the right one, but any, any option that you choose, there's going to be work involved because that's just how relationships are. Right. So now we're going to look at, um, uh, we're going to look at the, the blessings cards. So we have Priscilla Bluestone with the number 33. We have how light spiritual beginning. And pearl connect to the divine. So very interesting for me that um, I don't know if well, well, first of all, very spiritual cards here with alite and halite and pearl, but Priscilla bluestone stonehenge is actually made out of Priscilla bluestone. It's a very sacred stone. Um, so there's a very spiritual aspect to this reading altogether. Um, I have to be very honest. I think that based on like the signs that I'm seeing depicted here, um, we have Sky Guardian is the only court card that you have in this entire reading, right? So um, Sky is air energy. And then when you look at the major arcana, because that's how you, you typically find like what sign are you looking at in a reading? You look to see the court cards first, and then you check to see the major arcana because that's going to be your confirmation of what the court cards are saying. And so we have the world here um, we've got the wheel of fortune and by the way both the world and the wheel of fortune um, carry uh, the fixed elements to them um, and that's all four of the signs right so you know it's kind of a toss-up right as we know already you have a lot of options um, but having the sky guardian in the center Okay. And then having the lovers come out here, I think it's very possible that the person that you end up choosing could be an air sign. It doesn't have to be, um, that could be sun, moon, or rising, or they could just have air prominent in their chart. More specifically, it could be a Gemini. Again, it doesn't have to be. Um, but, you know, for those who subscribe to the twin flame theory, I have to actually point out that the lover's card um, being ruled by Gemini, Gemini being the twins, you know, this is one of the cards that people you do talk about when they say, you know, twin, th twin flame. We've got all this spiritual energy over here, sacred stones. So, you know, ultimately what you end up with in terms of a relationship is going to be a very sacred relationship. More than likely, it's going to be a long-term relationship. Um, probably you'll end up choosing an air sign or someone with air prominent in their chart in some way. It doesn't have to be. It could be a Gemini. It doesn't have to be. We're actually going to get some charms to see if there are any other signs that come out. You know, if they do or they don't, I'm not going to use the um, astrology wheel for the charms. I am going to use the chakra board. Um, so if any signs do come out, they will be a special confirmation um, for those uh, who are either, you know, have that sign in your chart or are dealing with that sign. All right, give me one second to get this situated. So I'm going to leave this butterfly here in the outer. i try to get that straight. Sorry. So if one of the charms just happens to fly out and land on that, then you've got a little extra message. And at the very end, we're going to use some astrology dice. So you might get some signs there. All right. That's a good period. Oh, sorry. Soul star chakra, earth star chakra. This is the chakra, um, you know, literally between your feet, your connection to mama earth. And this is the chakra above your head, um, which is your connection to source. We have root chakra, sacral chakra, solar plexus, heart, throat, third eye, and crown. And I also read this as the moon and divine feminine energy. This is the sun and divine masculine energy. Okay. 
Okay, so to start off with, we have I love you coming from the divine feminine. So that's a special message for someone. Someone is saying I love you. Um, also, love is your, you know, that's your, that's what keeps you connected, keeps you grounded. All right, so we have the peacock. We have the Aries charm. We have the sword. We have what I call the the compass sun. It's I call it that because it looks like a compass as well as the sun. It's just the way that it's situated. It looks like the compass to me. And we have the bellows. So um, if you're if you're feeling uncertain about your direction. Um, like if you're maybe you thought you were on the right path or something, but you're not finding as much joy in it as you used to. Um, I do feel like there's that you can breathe new life into it. Like, don't give up, don't give up with the sword over here. Um, so the difference between an ax and a sword, uh, they both speak to cutting something away or removing something from your life, but the sword is more precise, right? There, it's more um, strategic and sort of surgical, whereas the ax is sort of blunt or very like, um, you know, you're with an ax, like you have to have your head on a chopping block unless you're, well, I mean, I guess if you're in war that you have a war ax, that's a different way of, of cutting something away. But, but typically with an ax, you have to have something on a chopping block in order to chop it in two or to chop it up with a sword. Um, you, you have to know how to use it. You have to be strategic. So there's something that you need to strategically remove from your foundation. Um, in probably in order to breathe new life in this direction, uh, be yourself is going to be very important because I, I with the, the peacock came out in the reverse. Um, and so when it's in the reverse, it's saying that you're not showing your, your, your peacockness, like all those feathers. That's what's so beautiful about a peacock. It's when he actually, I mean, he's striking when his tail is not, um, you know, when he's not trying to catch a mate, that's why they um, they do that. They're trying to show off for a mate. Come on, focus. Damn it. Ooh, that's going to drive me nutty. Come on. I hate this camera. I really, really hate this camera. And yet I've already tried to buy other ones and they just don't work. I keep having to go back to the same damn camera and I really hate this camera. Oh my God, whatever. Okay, now I'm getting angry. <laughs> That's how I feel about this camera. So you need to be yourself. You're not allowing your true self to shine through. Just allow your true self to shine through. Um, obviously, like I say, you could be dealing with an Aries, but Aries energy is the energy of a new beginning. Um, and so that completely ties in with all of this. Uh, so for the solar plexus, we actually have quite a bit going on over here. Uh, we have the dragon and the footprints together. Um, so the footprints is about faith and support. Um, and for me, dragon energy is about fortune. Um, I feel like it's saying like, have faith, don't give up, um, you know, um, allow others to support you, but also your, your, your fortune comes from the support of others. I, I feel like that's really kind of what it's saying. Like, and maybe the other thing is, is that, um, maybe you don't always see the support that you have from others. Maybe that's what this is trying to say. Like, maybe you need to re recognize it because I think it is dependent upon it. And so, you know, you, you can't just take like in that instance, that's dragon energy. So I typically don't read dragons as negative energy, but in this instance, I would say that this is a, a reminder to, um, 
thank those people that have supported you uh, over over you know however long or whatever or because it's it's because of the support of those people that you're able to succeed. Okay, so we have the um, the the Cancer charm in the reverse, and so Cancer you could be dealing with a Cancer, but Cancer is the sign that deals with like home and family, um, and so it comes out in reverse on top of the solar plexus chakra. You could be feeling as if maybe you have no um, like you have no power at home to be honest, because that's really what the solar plexus is about. It's your, your willpower, your will, exerting your will in, in the world, you know, being able to act in the world um, and exact your will. Um, we do have the telephone and the teacup coming out with the third eye and the solar plexus. So I feel like really what this is saying, like you're getting these intuitive messages about um, what you need to say, who you need to say it to, who you need to reach out to, follow those messages, do not discard them especially like with this tea so the teapot um that's like secrets being revealed right um and so uh, it could be that you receive a phone call from someone um but i feel like this is saying more because the teapot is on the third eye like you intuitively know somebody's secrets or you know the secret of something um uh we do have the sun and moon falling on top of the scorpio uh, charm and that's on both the third eye and solar plexus and so this could be attached to a scorpio some secrets about a scorpio um uh someone who is scorpio sun and moon possibly um but this is like um like you know you're don't like it's like you're spilling the tea that you know intuitively more than likely is what is what this is saying it's like because the sun brings clarity and the moon is emotion, right? So I, I feel like it's saying, you know, exactly intuitively, like, you know, exactly um, how a Scorpio was feeling or something, right? Like you, like whatever it is, it, even if that, the like, you, if you're dealing with a Scorpio and they're saying, oh, well, that's bullshit. Like what you're saying is not true. I, I think they're lying. Honestly, I think you do know. And I think this telephone could be like, maybe you have to call them out on it. You have to speak up. You have to say something. You have to like spill the beans, spill somebody's tea, tell somebody's secret, something. Um, you do have the number three domino um, on the solar plexus. So this is the numbers two, one, three, 12, and 21. Um, and, and then we have... Uh, the Capricorn um, uh, constellation. And so there's like hard work attached. Um, <laughs> funny, we have Jukebox Hero by Foreigner playing in the background, and it's the part where it's saying he's got stars in his eyes as I'm looking at this constellation. Um, there's work attached to this there's a lot of work. Um, that's what Capricorn energy is. You've got to be the boss. You've got to take the lead. Mm, interesting. Okay. So we're going to come over to the throat chakra. Oh, if you want something to, if you want to create something, you have to speak up with that because that's the rune of birth. We've got the key over here with um, the crown and throat. So again, the key is speaking up. And the key is speaking up. We do have the Virgo um, uh, charm here with the hundred dollar bill, and this is over the heart and and throat chakra areas. And so, um, it's like your abundance comes from healing, compassion, being of service to the others, paying attention to the details. Uh, it could also be attached to a Virgo um, in some way. You could be dealing with a Virgo. Um, so Virgo rules the sixth house. And, and the only reason that I'm even de delving into this further is because it's sitting over the heart chakra, right? There's like, there's like abundant healing with this energy here. That's the money and then the Virgo charm because it's the sixth house, which is the house of healing. This can also be like abundance coming from work, but I feel like the abundance is coming from like healing. There's like 
it's like heart healing or something. It heals your heart or that whatever this is heals your heart. This whole thing heals your heart in some way. All right. So let's do some um, astrology dice. We're just going to drop them in and however they land. That's how we read them. Okay. All right. So our peacock got blown all the way over here to this sword. Remember what I was saying about how you have to be really strategic of cutting certain things away. Um, it could be that there are certain, like you're not showing your true personality because there are certain aspects to your personality that maybe you need to heal and get rid of, or maybe um, that's like, that's why you're afraid to show your true personality or something because I don't know, because of the things that you need to heal. Um, we have the fourth house coming out with this uh, uh, die here. Um, so this is all about like home and security. We do have Aries again. So like this is like a confirmation for Aries, but also a new beginning. Um, so you could very well be dealing with an Aries. There could be some security coming in. Um, maybe maybe you are an Aries and this is confirmation for you that, you know, you need to just be yourself. Anyway, um, we have the song Black and Blue by Pop Evil playing in the background. And so interestingly, we have the fourth house coming out over here with the uh, south node coming out um, on this particular die. So the south node is coming out over the sacral and solar plexus chakra. The fourth house is coming out over the solar plexus chakra. And remember when I said this cancer charm could be speaking to family home and family issues that's absolutely what these two um uh are speaking to as well creativity but also you know the south node in an astrology chart this is where you have mastered something right um uh but the problem with the south node is that people tend to stay attached to their south node because they've mastered it because the the experience that they have there they're so comfortable that they don't want to leave that it's the they don't want to leave home you don't want to leave the comfort zone you don't want to leave um uh anything behind because it's easy there right if you go towards your south node it's hard um it's very uncomfortable it's it you know can be very frightening um for some people it can even be traumatic um but that's not everyone that's a very rare occurrence so anyway you know all of this is saying you need to leave the comfort of home and family or the comfort of whatever situation that you're in um you need to leave your comfort zone in order to realize the the potential of this dream here um with the mercury coming out on top of the money here on the heart chakra this is an abundance of communication that like that does that is very happy good positive because this is in the upright um and it's coming in towards you i don't think you're going to be the one communicating i think this is also attached to in the reading where it says you have multiple choices it's just a confirmation there's multiple choices okay we do have the sign of scorpio um coming out over here on top of um you know, interesting, that's twice now that Scorpio came out. So that's a confirmation for Scorpio as well. So we have Aries and Scorpio very, very strong in this particular reading. Um, but yeah, so the sign of Scorpio uh, landed over here on the crown chakra with the throat chakra next to the key and Virgo. Um, so remember Virgo was over here that had to do with like healing that would be abundant and so this is where it's saying you know what you need to heal especially with scorpio energy you could it could be that you're dealing with a scorpio but scorpio energy is the energy of like psychoanalysis diving deep i'm 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 trying to like actually scorpio is kind of obsessive for this reason because they're trying to figure figure it out right and they do become obsessed like you can, there's, you do become obsessed where you have to analyze something to death. Basically that's Scorpio energy. Um, you know, so maybe that's what, you know, maybe this is saying, you know, you need counseling. I don't know, you know, you're the only one that knows that. 
Um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and leave it here. I hope that resonates. If it does not, please stay tuned. There may be another reading for you if you're on the channel that does. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, tell your friends, whatever you can to help get the channel out there as I am new here. And I thank you for watching. A uh, quick side note, we have the song, um, uh, <clears throat> My Fault by Imagine Dragons playing in the background. Okay, um, I almost forgot for a second what group three was. Hello, group three. You're the goat. How could I forget the goat? Capricorn energy. All right, so... We're going to use some tarot cards to see what the bullshit is for you this week. And then these we will leave until the very end to see what your blessings are. And we are going to use the Raven's Prophecy for you. So, so um, fitting for Capricorn energy. My melancholy friends. <laughs> Sorry, but Saturn can make you guys, you know. Debbie Downers at times. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. And I don't know why I even feel that at all. You know, I typically don't even say that about Capricorn. I would typically, if I'm going to describe their energy, I would describe them as the worker bee, right? The CEO. But yet, for some reason, I felt the need to talk about Saturn's restrictive, you know, dry. <laughs> cold melancholy depressive ass so let's see what's going on for you are you depressed or are you trying to climb a mountain one more So what is the bullshit portion of your reading? Oh, I, yeah, I kind of, I kind of feel like I, I accidentally did that and it's so many cards. Hold on, let me see how many there are. You know what? I'm going to roll with it. Even though it's 12, we'll just make a very, uh, we'll make an extra long nine card spread. The last three cards are going to be the cards that are, will be the outcome. Um, okay. So we have the queen of wands on the bottom of the deck. So the queen of wands is very attractive. She's very fiery. Look at those lips, right? Sexy. Um, intelligent, charismatic, fun, funny, um, you know, just very uh, intuitive as well, um, very passionate. So is that describing you? What's going on? All right, we'll leave this one here. We have the song Notorious by Upsall playing in the background. All right, so we're starting off really strong with the star. I love it, especially with the Queen of Wands. It's saying that like you're attracting a lot of attention. Look at the Queen of uh, Coins, very abundant, um, very stable, secure. Look at the judgment next. This is like, and, and all of this top row, this is going to be what's on your mind, right? Um, 
And so I kind of feel like maybe there's like education or leadership or something on your mind over here. Study something with that book. There's like study attached to this. Um, it could be even be that maybe like a graduation in some way because of that crown. Um, uh, recognition for your work that you've been putting in. Uh, maybe this is what you're hoping for, especially with Capricorn energy there. That's what the star card is about. Like you, the star is a star for a reason. It, it shines and it lights up the night, right? It's recognized. You can see it from afar because it's so bright, right? So like, this is what you, this is the energy that's on your mind. This is what you want, right? Oh, interesting. Uh, this next row is, um, what's kind of happening in your reality right now. This is like your most recent energy that you, that you're either sitting in and, and is actually leaving as we speak where you're coming into, oh, the five of cups, interesting. And the moon, why, why, why are you upset? Why are you so sad? What's going on? What's going on? There's worry depression, anxiety, fear, and then it gets like doubled over here. That's what it was most recently. Now you're like really sitting in regret, right? Regret and sadness. Um, you know, that's what the five of cups is about. Like, um, I miss so-and-so I'm thinking about the past over here, all of this bad energy, because look at, there's a reflection here. You're trying to reach out to someone. I miss this person. Like what's going on this person or this thing, you want to be recognized for something and you're not, you're not able to grasp it. And it's got you really upset, really upset by this energy, right? This is what you have control over. So in the recent past, with the three of wands, right? Um, you had control over how long you waited for something. Uh, right now you have control over a decision that needs to be made or something that needs to be said with that queen of swords. And in the immediate future, with the ace of swords, uh, what you will have control over is like how you deliver this information that you're that you're saying it's quite literally like um it's the truth that's what the ace of swords is is you're the only control that you have over this particular situation is the truth and how you deliver it whatever that truth is you're the only one that knows um and but you've been waiting for this recognition for a while right and and it's been in your control how long you waited so you can't be upset about that. I don't know why I need to feel the need to point that out, but I feel like I do. Um, and so it's time to deliver this truth. What is this truth? Okay, so you've been waiting for reconciliation with someone or something. Um, this three of cups, typically the three of cups is like a celebration. It shows three friends getting together, um, you know, and they're out on the town. Um, but to me, it actually kind of looks like um, these birds actually look like they're fighting. That's the only time you'll ever see birds in those positions like that is when they're fighting with each other. If they're out having a good time, especially ravens, you're going to see them up flying around in the air, like, you know, flying circles in the air, doing loop-de-loops and stuff. They're not going to be in these positions. So this actually looks like a fight. Have you been, so it, I got to be honest, um, the recognition, like, have you been, have you been waiting, waiting to have some sort of argument with someone? <laughs> Have you been waiting for your opportunity to say something to someone, to give give someone their comeuppance or something, especially with this queen of wands? Like you want to like tell someone off? Ooh, I wonder. All right. Okay. So now, the, and remember, this is the outcome. Okay. The, what you have control over right now is whether or not you walk away from this. You have a chance in this moment to walk away. Are you going to do it? I don't know. I wonder because of these two cards right here, like, are you waiting to give someone a piece of your mind? What's up? Damn it. You got the five of coins. Okay. Um, it's your choice. You do whatever you want to do. 
I do have to say with this particular card here, especially if you're like, look, you're looking for recognition for something. It's not coming. And now you want to give someone a piece of your mind, X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is what you are going to manifest. This is, this is the bullshit portion of your reading. And remember how the cards fell. And I felt like I needed to do it this way where this was going to be your outcome. The five of coins, the five of pentacles is a card of rejection. It is a card of being left out in the cold. Um, it is a card of needing support and not knowing where to go to ask for that support. It's a card of lack. So if you have been waiting to tell someone off, to say whatever it is that you need to say to get it off your chest, I don't know if it's a good idea, to be honest with you. We're going to look at the blessings portion of your reading um, just to see what they have to say, and then we'll get some charms. Um, but based on what these, these cards here, uh, especially this one here where it says you have con what you have control over is how you deliver what you need to say. You have The only thing you have control over is the truth. Um, I think you might want to temper your words. I think you might want to be very careful about how you deliver what you say, because I don't think you want to be left out in the cold and I don't think you want to feel rejected. And I think that's what's going to end up happening is if you keep on the road that you're on in, with what you want to do so far. And that's typical for Capricorn energy. I'm not even going to lie to you. My mother was a Capricorn. And let me tell you, man, when she wanted to tell you off and put you in your place, that Capricorn came out and Capricorn let me, is one of the most competitive signs in the Zodiac. So if you're feeling like you need to prove a point, you might want to think about what you're going to say before you say it, because you could prove a point that's a little bit too, too final for your own liking. All right. That's all I'm going to say. So we have Aho White, which is a crystal of communication. We have Tiger's Eye, which is personal power in action. Oh, this is totally making sense. And then we have the color brown, establish boundaries. You cannot make this shit up. So again, more advice. This is the blessing. Okay. You can absolutely... 1000% establish the boundaries that you are wishing to establish. You can do it in a way that um, honors yourself with this tiger's eye. But this Ahoite, let me tell you, Ahoite is a very gentle communication stone. Uh, all you have to do is look at the coloring to see why. It's because the blue that comes from this Ahoite is concentrated in the tip it's actually a very rare crystal, okay? It's very expensive because it's rare. It's beautiful, but it's also a very gentle stone. The, the energy, just looking at it, you can feel that blue coming through. It's got a very soft energy. It's a very gentle energy. You better gentle your words or you're going to end up on the outside of something that you don't want to be on the outside of. That's all I'm going to say. So let me go ahead and clean these up. And we will get some charms. Oh, I started pulling the wrong deck. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm trying to get ahead of myself. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have the song. World So Cold by Three Days Grace. <laughs> if I remember this song correctly. <laughs> remember what I was saying, like, you be careful. You don't want to be left on the outside of something. You don't want to be on the outside of. Oh, I put my thing upside down. I don't ever read it that way, but we'll do it this way. Just, just because I did it, we'll just leave it. Go with it. Go with it, Missy. Okay. Um, so... We have um, Earth Star Chakra, Soul Star Chakra, Root Chakra, 
um, sacral, solar plexus, heart, throat, third eye, and crown. Earth star is also read as the moon and divine feminine energy. Soul star is also read as the sun and divine masculine energy. If any of the charms fall on top of Mr. Goat here, that is going to be a special message that we read. Otherwise, we are just going to pull some charms. Um, and then at the very end, we'll drop some astro die on top. All right. So we have Leo, or well, not Leo. This is not actually the Leo charm. It's actually a lion that, um, oh, come on. I hate this camera. It's a lion. Trust me. It's a lion um, that came out on top of the earth star chakra. Um, and interestingly, we have this, the compass sun, the sun that I call the the one that has to do with um, finding joy on your path or being on the right path, right? Having Finding joy in it. Um, that is straddling both the uh, earth star and throat um, chakra uh, areas. And so um, it came in the reverse, right? And so what this is telling me is that you are no longer finding joy on your path in the way that it is as, as it is right now. Um, and you need to communicate that to someone. Um, and you probably want to roar it from the rooftops as we already saw from the reading, because that's what lions do. They like to roar. And when you're looking at the um, earth star chakra or the moon, we're talking about emotions, right? And that's why lions roar. They do it to let people know this is my territory. You've, you've crossed a boundary, you're, you know, um, whatever the case may be, right? This is mine. Stay away, stay away. Um, and so, uh, you know, again, I, I feel like, you know, this is just kind of going back to the reading. It's just more confirmation for the reading, right? Um, let's kind of, uh, we do have the star or excuse me, the pentacle or pentagram that came out on top of the um, soul star chakra. And so this has to do with like protection um, as well as like, um, you know, abundance. Uh, but I'm feeling this is more... Um, like protection from source, right? Like you are protected. Um, I have to be really honest, okay? Um, because this is falling on top of the, what I would call the sun or masculine energy and the pentagram can be associated to the devil. And we do have Capricorn energy already coming through here, which corresponds to the devil in Tarot. I feel like that's what this is saying. I feel like this is you, literally. This is just like a confirmation of you. This is what is in your head, right? Because this is a soul star chakra. Um, you're trying to protect your boundaries. You're trying to protect yourself, which is what the pentagram does. Um, it's what the pentacle does. And the pentacle has a pentagram at the center. Um, and so you're wanting to, again, this is just confirming you're wanting to scream your position from the rooftops because you're not happy with the way things are going. I don't know if that's a good idea. <laughs> um, we do have the music symbol over here, like harmony is what's going to bring in security as well. So again, that talks about like you trying to harmonize with others, trying to be flexible to harmonize with others. You have the candle. Oh, interesting. We have another, we have the guitar. So music is, is going to be very important um, in this situation to bring. Um, uh, and we do have the song Heart of Glass by, by Blondie playing in the background as well. So music. Uh, or creativity is going to bring in um, security. Uh, we have the $10 bill and the $100 bill both in the upright. So this is like abundance, positivity coming in. Uh, we do have the, the $10 bill is actually coming in with the candelabra sitting on top of it. So I feel like this is saying there's like an abundance of clarity coming in because candles, you know, the candelabra, it lights the way, right? That's why you would use a candelabra um, to light up a room. And then again, you know, clarity, we have more um, communication coming through with the turquoise. Uh, we also have once upon a time or the book coming out with the, um, the Jera, 
or the the rune of um like um uh, uh the the rune of the harvest or the process right it's a rune of growth and gain um and so but i think they're going to be small gains because we do have the rat here um so rats are like pests right small usually it can be like small losses um but i feel like you can create gain even though there are these losses and it's because of this abundance the the mermaid did come out next to this hundred dollar bill and so mermaids are water energy they are um you know it's like emotional energy so there is an abundance of emotion attached to this but i do think this is like joyful or, or i think it's positive it's all positive even though this rat is here i think i think this is what's kind of um, because it's so close to the um, throat chakra, like what needs to be communicated, I think is what this rat is representing. It's all of the problems that need to be brought to light. And then uh, we do have what I call my scepter courts here, um, straddling both throat and root chakra. So again, um, you have to take the lead. Whoever's watching this, you have to be the one to take the lead to speak up, um, but do it in, in a way that brings class um or do it do it classy um i say that because we do have the queen on top of the solar plexus chakra we also have the ballerina and the peacock together sitting next to the the um third eye and solar plexus so you know intuitively like like um so ballerinas are very graceful um they're very balanced um peacocks you know are are very unique um and so this is 100 be yourself um but be be you know like you're gonna have to tiptoe around the way that you say some things to show your class maintain your class i cannot say that enough with this crown here and all of the everything that came out especially look at i choose strength over the throat chakra and the heart chakra in other words don't let your anger get the best of you the sword on the throat chakra you have to be very strategic in the things that you do say there are going to be things you want to say that you just can't you're going to have to suck it up you just can't um this is your last shot um be very careful with this last shot because there are going to be losses i think because you do have the 20 dollar bill in the reverse next to this gun um you can breathe breathe new life into the situation with the bellows again there will be losses there will be things that you're unhappy about you will hear things that make you very unhappy because the sun came out in the reverse i think there are probably going to be things that you hear that hurt your feelings and we do have um, Virgo on the solar plexus. Uh, so, you know, the details are going to be very important, but also being compassionate and healing and trying to be like of service, right? Um, you know, that's that's what the Virgo rules, the sixth house in astrology, and which is the house of service. How do you care for others? How do you take care of yourself? We do have the song um, Wild Things by Alicia Cara playing in the background. Um, okay, so let's get some astro die. We're gonna just drop them in and read them, however they land. You got Neptune falling right dead center earth star chakra. Neptune is your dreams, right? Your compassion, unconditional love. Um, so you have to ground and nurture all of these things nurture your dreams nurture your compassion for others nurture your sense of universal love universal oneness um that's what will put you back on your path because it came out next to this um uh, sun here we have the tenth house coming out on top of the crown chakra and throat chakra so this tells me that um, this could be associated with like your career or your reputation in some way uh, we have the sign of taurus coming out over the solar plexus and root chakra so you could be dealing with a taurus or you could be a taurus yourself uh, but taurian energy is the energy of like money and values and valuables so it could be like you you um you need to exert your values in order to um you know establish boundaries right uh, we do have the south node and pisces the south node is coming out over the sacral chakra um, the peacock moved to this area as well and so um this talks about 
Like, you know who you are and you have to, you have to come from that place. 1000%. You have to come from an authentic place in order to create what it is that you want to create your dreams, which is Piscean energy. It's 12th house energy. Um, and that's coming out over the solar plexus. So you could be dealing with Pisces, but I do think this is like creation of your dreams because of Neptune here, um, which is it's the uh, Pisces that rules Pisces. Um, and then we have the first house coming out over the third eye. So again, this talks about you, your intuition, your ideas, your dreams, your everything. Um, so again, I hope this resonates. If it does not, please stick around. There may be another reading for you here on the channel that does. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, tell your friends, whatever you can to help uh, grow the channel as I am new here. And I thank you for watching. Hello, group four. So we, you are the dove. Doves, um, give me, you know, thoughts of peace, companionship, support. All right. So we're going to use the cat to road, find out what is the perfect portion of the bullshit and the blessings. Maybe you're looking for some peace or some kind of support in your situation. Um, you know, there's Mercury is retrograde as I'm filming this. So, you know, very likely there's some sort of misunderstanding happening as we've been seeing in a lot of the different readings. Um, you know, some sort of misunderstanding or some communication takes place to clear up a misunderstanding. We're going to leave these cards here till the end of the reading. Um, we're going to use the cat tarot to find out what is the bullshit. And this is going to tell us the blessing. One more shuffle and then we'll get into it. We have Led Zeppelin with Stairway to Heaven playing in the background. Oh, interesting. All right, so we got the first three cards right off the bat. Nine cards spread. We got the two of pentacles, the three of swords, and the four of wands. Very interesting combination. So the three of swords and the four of wands are complete opposite energies. And the two of pentacles is the energy of juggling, balancing. Um, so it's very interesting. Like, are you juggling? Are you, are you feeling bipolar at this moment? Like one minute you're very sad. The next minute you're fe feeling very excited and celebratory. Like what's going on? Is this, are you, are you like, literally, I feel like that's what it's saying. Like you're, you keep going between these two extremes and maybe that's why you want peace in your life. Um, let's uh, get some more cards to see what's going on. Oh, yeah. All right, so now we have um, the King of Cups, the Seven of Wands, and the Hierophant. Interesting. Um, we have just two more cards. I'll get some more cards in just a second. Okay, so the King of Cups is, you know, it's energy of someone who's very emotionally stable, someone who's mature, someone who's happy where they are, um, which again is kind of the opposite of this particular energy, which is the energy of like defending yourself, right? So, um, and then we have the, the Hierophant or the priest, which is a card of like wisdom and counsel and advice. Um,
Interesting. Hold on. This can also be about a marriage because it is the Hierophant, although it's just one cat. Well, there's a statue of a cat behind this one, but it's just one cat depicted in this particular card. So let's actually look and see what we have over here. So we, we do have um, the hanged man. So I'm thinking that this is possibly, um, if it's not a water sign, um, I, or if you're not a water sign, like you are someone who was feeling mature and stable and all of these things. And maybe um, it could be that you're in a relationship with someone um, where like all you do is fight. Like, especially because I feel like you maybe you went into this situation thinking it was going to be like, all this good stuff, st stability, all of this that you were ready for, but then boom, here's this, like you're getting smacked down, right? Um, and the only reason I say that is because this is your center card, having to, to defend yourself all the time. And that could be the reason that you're feeling bipolar and that you want peace is because you're always having to defend yourself against whatever this bullshit is, right? Um, we do have the three of wands, so we've got the three of swords, the seven of wands, the three of wands. Um, we've got a three here. Well, hold on. Let me get some more cards. And look at, you've got the five of swords on the bottom of the deck. This is more energy of like conflict. Um, and the three of wands, look at this cat is like, waiting in anticipation for a bug or something to come near it so that it can try and like catch it right like wait they're trying to, to they're they're waiting uh, in anticipation for the perfect opportunity the perfect opportunity of what and that's that's also interesting because these two cards are both cards of waiting the hanged man and the three of wands are both cards of waiting so you're waiting for your opportunity I don't know. Let's see. Let's get some, I don't know. There's a lot of conflict here, but you're waiting for your opportunity of something. I don't know what. Yeah. If something doesn't come out soon, I'll just take one from the top, but uh, let's give it a shuffle just to see. I he's just like all of that purple is just catching my attention. Gorgeous card. All right. That's actually quite a few. I don't know if I'm going to take all of them. We do have the Queen of Pentacles on the bottom of the deck. Um, so that's like 
um, the energy of like security, abundance. Um, but let's see what this is. What are you waiting for? Your opportunity to what? Uh, we have interesting. We have the song Yes Girl by B. Miller playing in the background. So it's interesting that that's coming out with this whole reading where it's talking about conflict, having to defend yourself all the time. Now she's saying like, I won't be your yes girl, not anymore. Anyway, so we have the 10 of cups, um, the page of uh, pentacles and the five of uh, cups. So basically, right. Um, You know, I got to be honest, I was asking the question, like, what are you waiting for your opportunity? Like, what, what is this opportunity that you're waiting for? Um, it's not really answering. Although I feel like it could be like you're waiting for your opportunity to kind of leave, to be honest with you, um, or your opportunity to... Yeah, I would say leave because look at that next card that cat's looking out the door. Um, like you're waiting for your opportunity to get the fuck out. Look at that. There's that conflict again. See, um, but this over here, this talks about like regret over meeting, like you regret meeting. Well, actually, um, like this one, this talks, this is like curiosity, right? Okay, I just realized what this is talking about. You're like waiting for your opportunity to, to meet your person. All right, so this feels like family right here, because this is, you know, typically the Ten of Cups would show like a couple and their children. And that's, that is what it's showing here, but there are so many kittens here that I actually feel like, um, I'm actually kind of getting the, the impression or the idea that all of this energy here is conflict within a family. And maybe you're not in an actual relationship. This might be like the, the environment that you're in right now. Right. It's just like conflict, conflict, conflict. You're just, you're just waiting for your opportunity to leave. You're looking out the door, right? Cause this is all you have right now. Um, look at, there's that 10 of earth, the chaos that in the, if you watch the first reading, you'll know that I, I see that particular 10 of pentacles as chaos rather than security. Um, so anyway, uh, like maybe right now and, and look at even with this, because there's so many damn cats, like I don't feel like this is a couple with their kids, even though that's what it's depicted. I feel like in for this particular reading, I feel like this is a family dynamic where there's a lot of conflict. You're waiting for your opportunity to like leave. Um, there's this regret though, regret over meeting somebody, regret over connecting with somebody because of the way that this is right. Cause you know, obviously this is a porcupine and this cat is like coming up and talking to this porcupine and what do porcupines like to do? And, you know, um, anyone who's ever had a dog or a cat who's interacted with a porcupine before knows exactly what kind of damage can happen from an interaction like this. Right. So again, <laughs> there's like, and then look at this cat is so regretful because they they you know went got a little too curious and ended up in the water come on focus right okay and then interesting we have um love the way you lie by eminem playing in the background um so it totally does play in like i don't know i don't this is this is like i feel like this is family conflict one person is waiting for their opportunity to get the fuck out um they regret the they regret the interaction they regret something about this interaction meeting this something about this the conflict maybe there's something that they regret but they are literally looking for their moment to leave um at this time let's see what the blessings are that are coming in 
So we have appetite, carnelian, and deep mental clarity. Um, so this is kind of, you know, going back um, Um, it's going back to like, um, <clears throat> give me a second. It's the appetite that's. You know, appetite, it talks about like speaking up, saying something. Um, but I don't know. Like, I, it doesn't. I feel like that shouldn't be anything said. That's so weird. I actually want to get some um, clarifiers on this. Let's see. But, you know, like typically with this energy, I would say um, you're going to have to like get creative uh, to get to get your opportunity to get out. But I kind of actually feel like I don't know why. I just feel like it's not a good idea to say anything. I don't know why. Hold on. I feel like we need more than just that one card. I, just, I want some more clarification on what the blessing is. Okay, <laughs> I should have just turned it over. I'm like, why won't a card come out? What is this one saying that it wants me to know? Why won't a card come out? All right, so, um, so you know, th there's a reason that I felt like you shouldn't say anything. And it's not really that you shouldn't say anything. That's not so much what it's saying. With the Six of Earth, this talks about, um, uh, like, it's the energy of... Um, reciprocity right like i take care of you you take care of me right um uh, it's the energy of being fair um equality is what can be found with six of pentacles and so if you're in a situation where there's a lot of conflict um where you are constantly feeling as if you have to defend yourself um and you're just looking for your opportunity to get the fuck out right I, I do feel, I, I have to be honest, um, I do kind of feel like there's this, um, um, like regret over meeting, over meeting this person or interacting with this person or interacting with this situation at all. Um, but I feel like I, I'm, I, you know, like I say, I hate, I hate to say it, but I have to be honest. I do feel like with this particular set of cards coming out as the blessing, I feel like what it's saying is you can't really have regret for this situation, for the time spent here, because the blessing is that you're learning to compromise or the blessing is learning to, um, have patience, learn, learning to um, reciprocate, uh, to share, to interact, um, learning to find your own peace, learning to speak up in a way that isn't um, um, aggressive or, you know, uh, full of conflict. You know, obviously the, there's some lesson that has to be learned from it. And you definitely don't want this to be because that's that's the central card in this nine card spread. So this is the energy that you're sitting in all the time right now. And, you know, learning how to um, 
navigate away from that energy in a relationship is the blessing that you are gaining from the bullshit this week. Okay, so let's go ahead and get some charms. We have Sweet Emotion by Aerosmith playing in the background. So we're going to leave the um, the card here, and if one of the charms just happens to kind of jump out and land on that, we'll read it as a special message. So um, this is the uh, uh, Earth Star Chakra, Soul Star Chakra, Root Chakra, um, Sacral, Solar Plexus, Heart, Throat, Third Eye, and Crown. Yeah, what we're going to do is cast some charms, and at the very end, we'll drop some astro dust in to complete the reading. Uh, I also read this as the moon and divine feminine energy, and this as the sun and divine masculine energy. all right we don't have anything on either the solar plex or excuse me the soul star or um earth star which is good so for the root chakra we have the heart we've got the uh, open heart key we have the scales of justice and we have the horse room. So it looks like there's some sort of um, movement, like if, especially if you're dealing with a legal issue, um, there could be some sort of information coming in that's the key to the situation um, that brings justice, right? There's some sort of information that brings movement to the situation that brings justice or balance. Um, it is obviously some sort of situation that's a, a heartfelt relationship or something that's close to your heart. Uh, coming over to the sacral chakra and the solar plexus chakra area, we have the hair comb and the bridge. So um, the hair comb, especially coming out, you know, close to the sacral, this talks about, um, you know, taking care with your appearance and beauty, but it came out in the reverse like this. And so what it tells me is that you have not been taking care of or you have not been paying attention to those things. And it may be a very good time to do that, to you know, pay, just pay some extra attention to your parents for whatever reason. It could be that you, know, you may need to um, reach out to someone you know, to bridge the gap because that's what the bridge um, represents. Um, you know, uh, uh, taking two points to connect them. We do have another open heart key that fell in the reverse here on the solar plexus. So, and then we also have the lizard that fell in the reverse uh, with the dinosaur uh, and the bird. So, okay. What I find interesting about all of this is that, um, you know, lizards and birds all to me have a sort of, um, they have this sort of same feel, feel to them. They're, it's sort of a coldness in a way, although, um, you know, birds aren't technically considered cold animals. They're, you know, they're, they're, um, you know, they're, they're alive. They're, they're not, they're not cold or they're not technically all predatory, I should say. Some, you know, there are birds that are not predatory, um, but there is a predatory feel, a coldness, that the, the, a feel to dinosaurs, lizards, and birds um, grouped as a whole. They all come from eggs, right? Um, and so there's just something about that that just feels like, you know, that, that, um, 
there's just a coldness to it. I don't know how else to explain the way that I'm feeling. And so having that come out on the solar plexus chakra is very interesting to me for a number of reasons. Number one, this bird is still trapped in its cage. Um, and so, you know, you're feeling trapped, but you're not, you're feeling as if you can't speak up or say something about it. Um, this could be a long-term issue. We already know it's a family issue, but long-term because of the dinosaur. Um, you have the I will charm that came out over the third eye, right? So it's like, you already know that your way is never, ever going to like, you already know that there's no point in even trying to, um, ask for things your way because of the conflict that's already in this situation. Like your will is not going to be, or what you want, your desires are not going to be listened to. So maybe you, you're not speaking up, but you do have some sort of answers or solution. It's a creative solution as well. It's just, that you haven't spoken up about it. You haven't put those answers out there. You do have the number three domino again in the reverse. So threes are all about cooperation and collaboration. So, you know, maybe you're not wanting to cooperate or collaborate anymore. You're not wanting to work together anymore. Um, you know, take that however it resonates. We do have the Sagittarius charm that came out on the throat chakra. Um, and we have the Torahs, which is on the throat chakra on this end. So this end has to do with the heart chakra, how you feel. So Sagittarius energy is like very adventurous, right? Um, uh, you know, Sagittarius likes to discover new places and new things and new people. Um, and so that could be how you're feeling right now, or you could be dealing with a Torahs or a Sagittarius specifically. Um but it could be that maybe you um, you need to, again, speak up about how you feel. But also with Sagittarius, because of the arrows, it's like your aim being on target. There's a message there in that as well, like speaking up, um, uh, you know, um, like make sure that you're on that you're on target or on point when you're speaking up because of what we speak. Uh, spoke about before with that six of pentacles learning how to compromise learning how to navigate these difficult situations you have the sun that came out in the reverse and believe in love that came out in the reverse on top of the heart chakra so you no longer have any faith in love obviously with those two and then we've got the teapot um came out in the upright on top of the throat chakra you need to spill the tea you need to tell someone how you feel um yeah. Um, secrets need to be revealed in some way or secrets, I, actually not need. I think secrets will be revealed. I don't think you're good. Cause like I say, I, I feel like you need to be careful what you say. Like maybe you shouldn't say anything. I don't know. Or maybe you shouldn't say anything anymore. Like the time for saying something is over, but maybe there are going to be secrets that are revealed anyway. I don't know. We'll see how that plays out once we do these astro dice. Interesting. Did you see that? Um, so the sign of cancer came out on top of that teapot. So maybe um, you're dealing with a cancer um, and you're the, that they're the person whose secrets will be revealed. There's also Pisces that came out right next to the number three domino. So maybe you need to collaborate with a Pisces. Um, we have the moon, uh, the ninth house, and oh the ninth house came out twice interesting so interesting so the ninth house came out twice with the root um, chakra and the moon the moon is all about your emotions the ninth house is all about your higher self um and so you know um it's like, you know, I, I feel like this is saying you already know. And by the way, Sagittarius rules the ninth house. So while this is about your higher self, this is also about being adventurous, taking your shot, uh, put your aim being true, foreigners, foreign people discovering new things, um, you know, uh, being willing to um, interact with people who are different in some way. But um, I think it's your adventurousness, your willingness to learn, to travel, to move, to act, to discover um, that's going to make you secure and happy in this situation. Um, state, you know, you know exactly what you need. Um, stay true to that. Um, 
and then we have the Uranus uh, die that came out with the um, lizard. So again, like you have, remember when I was saying before with the um, open heart key and the lizard, like you have the answers, you have these creative solutions, but you're not sharing them. I think this is like, they, they might be unusual. Like maybe that's the reason that you're not sharing them. Like maybe you think they're too weird to, for, for whatever. I don't think that's the case, to be honest with you. I really don't. Um, I think you should share them. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and leave it there. I hope that resonates. If it does not, please stay tuned. There may be another reading for you here on the channel. If it does, please like, share, comment, subscribe, tell your friends, whatever you can to help me out as I am new here. And I thank you for watching.